Yeah, I'd have to punch her too. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be honest. All right. So, if what I said earlier is true, if you're better with decimals and fractions, then your dreams are about to come true because that's the next chapter is decimals. I thought I was bad at fractions. Yeah, so now we are in chapter 5. So, the first thing I want to make sure you guys understand, and guys, <coughs> let me try this a different way, because I think we've all written checks or seen checks, hopefully. Um, if you put into a check, if you put uh, $19.72, what do you actually write down on the line down here? $19.72. Maybe spell it right. I don't know. $19.72. Over $72. You guys with me? And, and that piece right there is huge because very often, for some reason, we don't, in general, know the decimal places and what their names are, what they actually represent. But we're able to do something like that. And of course, it's because we've divorced it. We say that's what they want me to put there. But that's actually what this place is. That second place in is the hundredths place. So notice something about numbers. What place is this? Oh, uh, thousands. Ten thousand. Uh, uh, Here. <coughs> thousands place, right? Guys, so this is the thousands. This is the hundreds. Hundreds. You so what happened from this place to this place? What did it actually do to a thousand to make it become a hundred? Divided by ten. So every step down I take is divided by ten. Every step up I take is multiplied by ten. Why is our number system based on tens? Hmm. You have ten fingers. You have ten fingers. That's the best theory going. Obviously nobody was around when our number system was created, at least not that can talk to us today. But if we had eight fingers, our number system might actually be based on eight. And when I say that, you guys might not even stop to think, what would that really mean? If any of you take Math 120 in your future, that's the first transferable course. If you take it with me, I will teach you Egyptian hieroglyphic numbers, Babylonian numbers. I'll teach you base 8, base 16, base 3. Right? If you want to. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Whenever you actually get there. Huh? Well, if you guys take 90, then you still have to take 103 or 110 after that before you can take 120 or anything else. <laughs> anyway, what's this guy here? What place is this? Tens. Tens. Okay. This is the ones. ones. Just do like you do. So, logically, if I keep dividing by 10, every step I take, 1 divided by 10 is 110. This is the tenths place. You gotta make sure that th is in there when you identify a place, or else it's gonna look like this place, right? This is the tenths. Tenths place. So, of course, this is the hundredths. Hundreds. Like we saw up here, 72 hundredths, hundreds. right? So that's the hundredths place. And then, you know, so on and so on. Thousands place. Ten thousands place, hundred thousands place, millions place, so forth. You guys with me? All right, so what does that really mean? Notice how the seven really didn't come to play here. It's where it stopped. The 72 is in the hundreds place. And we actually do that on the other side. There's two ways to say that number. I can say 1,400. Or I can say 1,400, right? Because the 14 is in the hundreds place. See how it always kind of depends on that second number here. The last number is in the hundreds, so the whole thing is over 100. So let me ask you this. If I had um, 
0 0.139. How would I write that as a fraction? Thousands. Careful now, what place is it in? This is in the tens, tens hundreds, hundreds, hundreds thousands. thousands. So it's a 139 over 1,000. Thousand. How are we doing so far? So cool. Now, real quick, let me try this out. This is not directly related to anything you have to do in the homework or any time in your whole life, but I want to show you this very quickly. Because personally, as a student, I would be wondering, well, Jeff, that's freaking one tenth. <laughs> that should that should somewhere be in there. That point one, I know it's got a three and a nine, but that point one is still one tenth. I know that stupid thing's one tenth. Where is that idea? Well, if I break this up, I don't know if anybody might have been thinking that, or now that I said that, you know what I'm saying. We'll find out. <laughs> Can I break that up as one hundred? Plus 30 plus 9? Yeah. Yes. Cool. All right. Not just because I'm the teacher, because it's actually legal. <laughs> and then I can break it up even further. I can say, okay, that's 100 divided by 1,000 plus 30 divided by 1,000 plus 9 divided by 1,000. You with me? Mm -hmm. What happens with these zeros here? Yeah, because they're each 10, so I can cancel that factor 10, that factor 10. So that is 1 10. And this is three one hundredths, like it's supposed to be. And finally, that is nine one thousandths. Again, yeah, none of you might have been thinking that, but I want to show you that. It's, it's got to be true. Point one should mean one tenth. I don't care what else is with it. And sure enough, I could write it directly like this, or I could write it in pieces exactly the place they're in. I should be able to do that. I have to be able to do that. And that is actually the same thing we did, remember back in section in chapter 1? You had to write 1,000 plus 400. All right, that's the same exact kind of idea, the exact same like expanded form. It's uglier because it's fractions, but it's the same idea. Okay, cool, maybe. Again, I know I show you things that you're like, that wasn't really bothering you, but that just completes the idea. Okay. So, decimals then are basically specific types of fractions. Since our number system is based on 10, any decimals that are based on 10, I have a special way to write them, because it fits into my number system. So what about writing stuff in words? Sounds weird to me. I'm not sure how else to say that. Write these out in words. about what you would write on a check. Now, hopefully you never have to write out a 21 cent check. But you would write that as a fraction, but then you write it the same way you say it. So how would you say, let me help you out on the first one, then I'll let you guys attack the next one. Point two one is what is a fraction? 21 one hundredths. So how would you say that then in words? 21 one hundredths. Hundredths. 21 Hundreds. Make sure you have the TH. There'll also be a jacket that's going to write 2100. Do you need this? You have to have that TH in there to make sure you have to do, I understand it's over 100. So, how would you write something like that on a check? You say 7. Yeah. Yeah, okay, now keep going with it. 300.
All right, so how would you say this one here? Seven and... I love it. Seven and three hundred and two thousandths. Be really careful that and, you only want to have one and. And that's going to be where that decimal place is. The whole part and the decimal part. If you have ands in more than one place, I'm like, well, you have more than one decimal in your number, that's kind of freaking out. The new math. The new new math. I like it. It's new math. <laughs> and then finally, this last one is really just a question of what place is that? Yeah, tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousand. So this would be seven, hundred thousand. Little, I'll put a little dash in there to make sure that I, it's different from 700 so the thousands. So doesn't have the TH? No, because it's hundred thousands. Thousands. Yeah. A little dash so I know that these go together. Seven hundred thousands. Yeah. So on 2, 7.302, is it the last number that's what you write? Whatever the last number is at? Wherever the last number is at, that's the place this whole thing is in. I like it. And it's really, why is that true is right there. That's why it's true. They each are in their own place, but when you put them together, it ends up taking on the name of whatever the last number of the place is. Is that cool? Because that's, that's nothing you should accept just because I say it. You put the name of the last number? Why? Why the hell would that be the way it is? But it's because the math actually backs it up. Okay, how are we doing so far? Is that uh, one little side note, by the way, since we keep talking about places, 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 you should realize that what's coming up is, of course, rounding. When we talk about places, we can then talk about rounding to that place. And the rounding never changes. It's another process that doesn't care. You get a decimal, rounding doesn't care. You just round to whatever place the same way as always. Um, but before we go there, what's, uh, what's point three as a fraction? Three over ten. Three over ten. Three over ten. And what's point thirty? Three thirty over one hundred. Thirty over one hundred. And what can you do with thirty over one hundred? Reduce. So these are equal then. Right. And you can add on as many zeros as you want to, really. Mathematically, mathematics don't care. Science, real quick. If any of you have to take a science class, these two would be considered different in one key way. They're the same value. It's just that if I if I'm a team and I report this as an observation, we say we observe that it's point three for the light wave, and then somebody else said, well, we observed it as 0 0.30. Which one is more sure about what they saw? These guys, because they went out one more freaking place, and we're like, oh, you guys suck. <laughs> so in science, more places actually means you're more confident about what you see. You're measuring out further and further. Mathematically, math doesn't give a shit. Math says these are both the same number. My right, science can do whatever you want to. Okay. That's a little side note. So if you have 1.7, if that's money, that's weird to us, of course. But what would 1.7 really represent? Dollar seven. Dollar seven. You can add that in. There. Of course, that's for gas stations coming in. They say, "I sneak one more." Nine cents. Yeah, they add that extra nine. Okay. But let's not do that. Yeah, dollar seventy gas. I remember those days. Yeah. You know, I remember. It. It was the lowest I ever paid. The lowest I ever paid is ninety nine cents or something. Really? When I joined the navy. And then everybody's like, dollar thirty? That's crazy. Uh, Oops. Five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you live in Carmel Valley and buy gas for service somewhere, it's just always like crazy high up there. It's, it's crazy. And you guys know there's like a uh, website that you can find really cheap gas. That's where I always try to go. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Now, that's an interesting math question you can actually do in the next level. You can say, okay, how much gas do I expend to get there, and how much money do I save? There. Um, so let me let me give you some rounding problems. So let's see, round each number to the indicated place. Here, 
dropping this much, you're not really getting anywhere in that. Yeah, yesterday it got really loud, so this is not bad compared to that. Not yesterday, but the other day. So the process doesn't change. You find a place. Hundreds place. Where's that? What number's in the hundreds place? Seven. Seven. Okay. Three is in the hundreds place. Seven is the one I look to to see what to do with this. Does it stay three or become four? Four. Because four. Four. that number's higher than just five or above. Right? So 1.04. Cool. Ten thousands place. What number's in the ten thousands place? The nine is in the ten thousands place. You look to the number next to it. Does it stay nine or go up? Stay nine. nine. Do it, and then lastly, to the ones place. So here's the ones place. The next number is a nine, so then I have to take that sucker up to the twelve. Is that cool? So you'll have several problems where they say write these in fractions, write these in words, round to this place, just analyzing the hell out of decimals from all different perspectives. So, one last thing we see in this, in this first section, and we'll do a little bit more uh, in the next section. So, using those inequality symbols or equal sign for these cases. Another place where knowing that math doesn't care, the zeros you put at the end might actually help look at some things. So what the hell do I mean by that? Well, in yeah, this first one, you probably can see which one's bigger. One point four two nine is bigger. And the way to really be able to see that if you have any trouble is how many places does this have? Two. How many does that have? Three. So I can add a zero on and make them have the same place. And now it's a lot easier. Which one's bigger, 420 or 429? 429. So adding that zero in to make it have the same place makes it easier to compare them. Here, you might look at the four and go, that's bigger. But this only has three places. That has four. So if I make them have the same number of places, math says add on zeros all day long. I don't care. We're like, we only want one this one. So now I'm comparing 30 to four, 
But that one's bigger. Because that four is, I know it's bigger than three, but it's in one less place. So overall, it's actually smaller. How are we doing there? Is that good? You guys okay? So again, I can't read you at all. Um, and then this last one, this, there should be hopefully something very obvious going on there. One's above the line, one's below the line. That's how I look at it. I like it. So one's above the line, one's below the line. The positive one's bigger. So I don't get totally focused on the decimal and not realize when there's a negative in there. So it makes it easier. All right, cool. Okay, so that's basically the first section deals with those kind of things, the, the basics of decimals. Um, I just want to do a little bit in the next section, and then I'll let us out nice and early. section where you're not allowed to use a calculator. Because the whole point here is, can you do this correctly? Not can the technology do this correctly. And what's the big deal when I have decimal? <coughs> yeah, the decimal points themselves at the lineup. It's, it's the same idea as, can I add one tenth and three hundredths directly? Can I add them the way they are? No, I have to add like terms, right? So I, I can only add things that are in the same place then, because then they're over 10 or over 100. Then they have like denominators. Is that, that's why I have to line the places up. So if I write 1.72, I have to put 3 right there, and 7 right there. Does everybody get that? Because even after I say that, I end up having people line up the last number. And then, of course, the whole thing is going to shit. And it should kind of freak you out that where the hell would you put the decimal then? at the end, if they're not all lined up. Those they have to be lined up so I know right where the decimal goes. And now I just add them like normal. If you want to, you can add these zeros in. Not a bad idea. Just make it look a little bit more like what we're used to. And now, now it's nice. Nine, seven, seven eight, 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 11. 11, I like it. Now the place where this, of course, gets more freaky is when you go to subtract. So. Both adding and subtraction, I have to um, line up the decimal points. But here's what can happen with subtraction. Um, if I had 19.3 minus uh, 14.781. I yeah, first thing, I don't care if I'm adding, subtracting, I want to line them up, the decimals. So I have 19.3 minus 7, got it, 14.781. Now here it's not just a nice thing, here it's a necessary thing. What's missing that I need to put in there? To zeros. The zeros. So then I can do something with those. Now it looks, now I almost don't care. I, the decimal place needs to be there. But mathematically, I don't care that there's a decimal place there. I know how to do 300 by eight. I know how to kind of proceed with this thing. So that decimal is going to be there. Exactly. So that needs something, that needs something, that needs something. So here, I've got to borrow from him. Yes, sir? Couldn't you just take one away from each other? I like it. So I was going to say, if you remember the shortcut I showed you earlier. So let me do it this way, and then I'll show you the shortcut. And the shortcut works a lot here, especially when you have to add a lot of zeros. Right, some of you guys are like, what was that shortcut? I'll show you in a minute. So if I do this straight up, I've got to borrow from there to make him 13. And then I can borrow from him to make him 10. And then I can borrow from him to make him 10. And now I can attack this thing. I'll get 8. No, 9 minus 1. Oh, that's 10 minus 1. I'm looking at it sideways. Ten minus one, nine. Nine minus eight. One. One. Twelve minus seven. 
Or five. A minus four. And then the ones are not four. Give me a little hoop to connect that. That's why when I write very often, I'll step back and it's all like this. Wow. I, I like when you do that because then it shows that we're not, like, we're human. <laughs> oh, Because <laughs> I do that all the time. Oh, so the shortcut. If I write, if I have 19.300 minus 14.781, here's the cool thing. I don't know if you guys remember this, and it should make total sense, hopefully. 11 minus 8 is the same as 10 minus 7 because of the same distance apart. So if I change the first number by so much, I have to change the second number by the same amount. And the subtraction won't care. The answer will be the same. Because the subtraction doesn't care as long as the subtraction just says how far apart are these two things. So what the hell does that mean with how the hell to do this problem? You take this to 19.299. And then that can go to minus 14.780. If you make that go down by one, you can you have to make that go down by one. And then they're the same distance apart. I don't know if you guys really get that. Do you have to get that? Hell no, you can do it this way. As long as you're not looking at your paper like this, you should be alright. But that's a really cool, I'm glad you brought that up. I was about to tell you, but that, that's the shortcut from earlier. So now it's a lot easier. Nine, one. The only thing I have to do is right here. There's the 5, and there's the 4, and that's the same answer they got. Cool. Yeah, how you doing? Is that not too bad, right? Yes, sir. Can you do a problem with the examples of 0 0.5 minus 2.2 plus 3.57? Yeah. Can you do that? Wait, wait, wait. Don't say it again yet. Did you just, has everybody got that, sir? All right. Should I do it again? Variables, Which problem are you looking at? 20, um, practice. Uh, oh, no, the blue book. Oh, the blue book. Sorry. Oh, okay, okay. I got you. Yeah, of course, that's the next level of evilness, is to throw yeah. variables in, on top of this stuff. So this one says 0.5x minus 3.2x plus 3.57x. So in general, what you would do is you identify what your like terms are, and then you can just focus on the decimals because they're just going to go in front of that variable. Does that make sense? Yeah. All of these are x. So I know my answer is going to have uh, x. So now I can focus on, okay, they're all like terms, so now I can actually do the uh, subtraction and the addition straight up. So I can put these together first if I wanted to. And how do I subtract them? Here's where it really becomes key, the, the method that I showed you before. If they're different signs, you subtract them. So I'll do 3.2 minus 0.5. That's what I did, and then you put the negative one. Now, is that what it says? Does it say 3.2 minus 0.5? No. No. But I know how to do sign numbers. If they have a different sign, I subtract them. Big minus small. That always makes it easy to do the subtraction. And then you put the sign of the bigger one on, so my answer is going to be negative. When you have these decimals, it actually becomes a little more crucial that you, you apply that idea. So 3.2 minus 0.5. That's not too bad. And 2.7. And then since the bigger one's negative, so these together make negative 2.7x plus 3.57x. And now I can actually just do exactly what that says. 3.57 minus 2.7. So I can set that up. 3.57 minus 2.70. Oh. Is that cool? Did you guys see that? The 3.57 is positive. Wait. That is negative. Why? What's up? All right, well, go back. Because it should have been a negative 2.7 because the 3.2 is bigger. It is a negative 2.7. Oh, okay. Well, you on the bottom, I got confused. So here's the work from the concept. What's the concept of sign numbers? When they're different signs, you subtract the numbers. So I'm subtracting 3.2 and 0.5. For some reason, I didn't look at the bottom, but I just looked at the bottom there. Then you put the sign of the bigger one on. So here's step one, step two. Is that cool? So there is a negative on it. 
So I will do 3.57 minus 2.7. That's cool. I can do it directly now because the, the minus one is smaller. So I can just go ahead and subtract them directly. And now I just subtract them like we always do. That needs something from him. So now I get 0 0.87. So 0 0.87x. And that actually is what we do. If I if I put that here, four x plus eleven x plus twelve x, what do you guys do? Four and eleven is fifteen plus twelve is twenty seven. And then you put the x on at the end. They're all like terms. Then you add the numbers and you put the variable back on it. And we actually do it a little more directly when we add decimals, because we normally have to be a little more careful with the decimals. Does that make sense? So this actually didn't change the process. I just have to remember to put the the variable back on at the end. Uh, let me see if they throw anything else freaky at you. Well, I mean, now, of course, they can do this kind of thing. All that stuff doesn't care what's in there. It's the same process. So everything we've learned about sign numbers and all this kind of stuff doesn't care if they're whole numbers, doesn't care if they're fractions, doesn't care if they're decimals. What's minus and negative? Less. Plus. Cool. No matter what the hell the numbers are. So this is negative 4.81 plus 2.6. Now how do I tack that? Subtract. Good. So they're different, they're different signs. So I subtract them, big minus small put the zero in there if I want to. And of course the answer is going to have to be what sign? Negative. Negative, because the big one's negative. So then this is not too bad. Nobody needs anything. That's good. So the answer is negative 2.2. So I have no problem at all with you having this work somewhere. Just at the end, circle what the actual answer is. So you're applying the concept of sign numbers. That's beautiful. And then you say, oh, it's negative because the big one's negative. No problem. And again, people still will do this, and somehow they're able to do that. And I get what I always get is I get stuff like, you know, this guy needs something from him, and this guy, so now this guy is 15. And then I, I get like 1 minus 4 is 3 or something. And none of this makes sense. <laughs> right? I can't subtract the bigger one from a small one. I have to have some other way to look at it so, I, so it makes sense. That's the way to look at it so it makes sense. Big minus small, and then put the right sign on. So obviously, the next few things we'll do are multiplying, dividing. They actually have a whole section about order operations. And that seems kind of funny to me because order operations is always there. But now they're just going to put some decimals on order operations. It doesn't change. PEMDAS, which is now you have decimals to worry about. Uh, and of course, just make sure before I say it, where is 5, 6? It's small. We'll have the equations in 5, 6 with decimals in them. And again, the whole process of solving equations does not change. You just have decimals to worry about. Well, decimals could be multiplying. The same to way, rid of, to get rid of the since decimals are all over 10 or over 100 or something, then you can certainly multiply by the LCD to get rid of them, just like you could in fractions. Yeah. So you can clear decimals out of the place. All right. So that's a uh, hey, set. Sorry. I'm letting them go right now. So that's it for today. Can I get my Yes. Okay, you see that? Okay. 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 Okay.